Welcome to Bridge Church Online. We are so excited for today as we head into part five of Hope is Dope. It's going to be a a great message. I'm excited to hear it, and I hope that you're going to be excited. So excited that you'll hit that share button that's below me somewhere, so that way you can share it with your friends right now uh, so they can join you as uh, Dave shares this amazing message of hope that's found in Jesus. And in fact, maybe... You could also be a little interactive. Maybe you could tell us what your favorite food is. Just type it right now. I'll give you two seconds. That's great. And then after that, I want you to tell me why you decided to choose bacon. And, uh, or maybe you can just tell me whether you like crispy bacon or soft bacon, but really, we just wanna know that you're here and that you're excited to get involved in today. Also, there is a giving link probably pinned over in the chat section uh, to my left, your right. Uh, if you call Bridge Church Home, uh, we, would be, uh, we would love it if you could just hit that giving button so that way we can continue to share this gospel message of Jesus Christ to the world. So we're gonna get excited for worship, but before we head there, let's just pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we can come to you on this amazing day and just uh, hear a great word about how hope can be found in you. So be with us at home, be with us with our families, and be with us as our friends as we get into this message. In your name we pray. Amen.
was lost, but you brought me His love for me. Oh, His love for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's Hey, welcome to Hope is Dope Part 5. Here we are in the middle of this series, and I say middle because I know it's long, but it's been awesome, hasn't it? Um, hope is an amazing thing. Research has actually shown that hope's, hope helps alleviate stress and anxiety, especially during adversity. And so you can understand why it's been a common theme through Church Online here during this pandemic. But, uh, you know, realistically, we want to be people of hope. We want to be people that point people to Jesus, and, and Jesus is is hope, he's peace, he's life. And so through this series, we've been kind of going through a different, you know, a few different things, hearing from some of the staff members, as well as just kind of like mini messages and whatnot. But uh, hope itself, you know, through this kind of whole series, we've been looking at the idea that, you know, like amidst all the conspiracy theories that are out there, we can find hope in the truth, you know, of, of real relationship with Jesus. We can find hope in relationship with Jesus, as we heard, you know, many weeks ago. We can find hope in the now like we heard a couple weeks ago, we can find hope in understanding who God says we are. And so, you know, without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to a dear friend of mine, a dear friend of us at the church, uh, and she goes by the name of Sam. Sam, it's so good to have you. You're just smiling. You're happy to be here. Absolutely. Now, Sam, uh, you come here. You've been at the church for, you know, basically almost a year. It'll be a yeah. year in like uh, October. I guess that's all we'll say all almost, right? But, uh, and you guys, uh, you and your hubby, uh, Davin, have been on staff here since probably about November. Uh, just a real treat, a real treasure to have part of the team. Uh, Shyla and myself, we absolutely love and adore you, and it is so good to have you joining us here for Hope is Dope Part 5. So real quickly, with a beautiful smile on your face, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name's Sam, as we already heard. Um, I'm 20. Um, I'm married to Davin, and um, I really 
love music and doing musical things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you also, uh, here at the church, you help out with kids. Yeah. And you honestly, you kind of help out. you got your hands in many different areas. Yeah. And it's been, again, it's been awesome to have you. So, Sam, we met earlier this week, uh, as we do with all these interviews. And we kind of just, you know, uh, like, it, I'm a little bit blessed, my, myself and my wife, because we get to hear kind of like the in-depth, you know, story from Sam. And, you know, and here today on Sunday, it's going to kind of be the condensed version. But uh, uh, when we met... You quoted a Bible verse. Can you tell us what that was? Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus. Awesome. Yes, that's right. I love that you can uh, recite that verse from memory. You had said it's one of the like the first verses mm -hmm. that you memorized, and you've kind of like held on to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's honestly been like as you said, kind of like that like the yeah. foundation of hope even in your life, right? Um, and now, what's interesting about your story, right? And and again, we kind of got to hear the whole thing, but um, you know, it, you're kind of still living. You're still kind of like processing through mm -hmm. your story. You know, a lot of times we kind of have testimonies, and it's like, well, I was here and now I'm here and everything's fine and dandy, yeah. right? For you, right, you kind of were able to kind of like, uh, um, you know, like highlight for us that I'm I'm still in this process of yeah. really finding hope, of really diving in, right? And so, um, you know, we want to hear, obviously, you know, like a whole bunch of your story this morning. So Sam, would you kind of take us back to you as a, a little child? Like you, you kind of said, you know, I mean, I always make the joke, right? I've been going to church since I was a fetus, but you you really were. I really were. You were in church, what, at six days old, you were already yeah. in church, right? My mom so. told me I was born on a Sunday and in yep. Sunday school the next week. Yeah. <laughs> so like my entire life in church. Yeah. 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 Just all of it. Um, different churches, different experiences. Mm -hmm. Like we started in a Baptist church. I went to an Anglican church and then we yep. went to another church and it's just always been very much there. Right. And very much a center of... Yep my family and like who we are. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's interesting that you kind of name those. You, you kind of have like a taste of kind of every denomination, as it were. So it's kind of neat that you're here with us because we're not really part of yeah. a denomination. We're part of a network, but it's more on a relational aspect mm -hmm. rather than a governance one, right? So um, Sam, you, you know, like taking us back, you know, kind of like through that, um, you had shared with Shyla and myself that, you know, the word that you used was, I was, I was very independent. Can you kind of just, you know, describe that for us? Well, yeah, it's been there my whole life. My mom likes to tell me the story of when I was a baby again. Um, and she like rocked me and rocked me and rocked me and sang to me and sang to me and sang to me and nothing made me stop crying. So she gave up and put me down and I just sighed like that was the biggest relief in the world and was content and fell asleep. And it's sort of always just been that way where I'm like, I'm just my own person. I'm independent. Yes, there's people around me, but I am very much, I can function, I can manage, I can do this mm -hmm. by myself. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you got this. Yeah, like, I got yeah, this. It's, 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 it's going to be okay yeah. type of mindset, right? So, um, and as you said, now through all of this, you, you said you were kind of born and raised in the church. Like, mm -hmm. what was that like living, you know, kind of like obviously with your family, but also like heavily involved? You guys were heavily involved, heavily involved. in the church, you know? Yeah. Um, and so what was that like kind of like, you know, coinciding with your kind of like independence as it were? Yeah, so church with my independence has been very interesting and a, very much a learning curve um, because, like, I've always just been there and I've always been, I got this, mm -hmm. so people trusted that I mm -hmm. had it. Yeah. And so I'd be leading classes, like, when I was barely 14. I'd be wow. doing all sorts of different things. I'd be leading worship on, like, youth nights. Yep. It was just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were you were in it, and I was yeah. there. <laughs> so now you mentioned, you know, at age fourteen, right? So a little bit before that, mm -hmm. you had mentioned at age eleven, there was kind of like this big experience, and one that you yeah. know I think we both agree was probably not the best experience. No. But tell us, tell us a little about that at age eleven. Well, yeah, um, when I was eleven, my parents decided to get a divorce, um, and it wasn't exactly the cleanest divorce. Um, so we were in church and all of these other things. My dad would lead music and he would do all these things. And then all of a sudden they were divorced and there was nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was like my dad completely cut off the church. And I was so like 
confused because right. I'd seen this man lead worship. I'd seen this right. man lead his family in devotionals. And I'm like, yeah. and it was just very much a it strange. Was very different. It's very different yeah, and strange. Right. Now, I mean, this might be a tough question to answer, mm-hmm. but like in that kind of like time, like, um, like, what did you do, or if if at all, did you do anything to kind of you know control the situation, or to kind of you know through yeah. the independence that you know you you know because on one hand independence it's like a it's a great quality, yeah. but then other times it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a weakness too, yeah. right? So Absolutely. you know in that instance, right? Do you remember kind of thinking like, is there something I can do to change this situation? I knew I couldn't change the situation, but. Um, I did not adapt well to it. Mm. Um, so like the everything changing just messed with me and right. everything moving and shifting. And I didn't really have a way to, with everything just moving and changing, everything was just so weird. Mm-hmm. I actually don't know. Right. I know that I did go into like very much myself. I'm like I don't trust people because I just don't know. Right. I just... I got me. I got this. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. I can do this, but I'm not going to let anyone help me do this. Mm-hmm. And it was mm-hmm. one of those sort of weird things. Yeah. 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 Now, um, do you remember, um, was there anything that you maybe kind of specifically did or do you know, kind of like, you know, as an avenue to even, mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean, not uh, independent stuff aside, but like even to kind of process through your parents getting divorced, you know? And the reason yeah. I ask that is because I know that there's probably a bunch of people watching yeah. that have, you know, whether they're divorced or not, whether they're, they're, they're children of people who have divorced or do you know whether mm-hmm. they're parents of children that have divorced? Like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there, there's a lot of people I think that would relate to kind of your story in that. So yeah, yeah like what, what did you do? I fell on to extracurricular things. Hmm. So like music, I would invest in more. I was super into dance at that time. I was a cheerleader. I was a cheerleader. I rocked that and I knew I could do that. And it was, I went into those and I focused on those and how all of those things were there. Just kind of filling. Yeah, I just filled filling. everything. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense too, right? Because a lot of times, you know, like it, it's not just the time thing. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, if I can be blind, it's like, well, I can control these things. I can, I can do this. So it's like that independence <laughs> yeah. kind of like, you know, fleshing itself out, you know, in that regard. So now, you know, and I, I can't remember specifically kind of when you had heard you know, this, this, this phrase that was given you in all of this, but I mean, you're a young teen, you're processing through your parents splitting. And as you said, it wasn't the cleanest and, you know, you, you weren't alone. You had, uh, you know, one older sibling and two younger Mm -hmm. siblings. Right. And so, you know, there was the, the kind of the, the, the family aspect of all of that. Um, and now through that all, right. And, and I know it seems like I'm camping on Mm -hmm. the independence thing. I mean, that's just a part of your story. Right. But, um, because of that independence, you had said that you had heard a few times a statement. Yes. I had been told multiple times that, um, I am unlovable, that I am unable to love others around me because Mm -hmm. I obviously don't feel love. Um, and yeah, it was just sort of like, I, I can't feel, I can't be loved. Right, right. Now, I guess what was, you know, your relationship and I, we want to be careful. I mm-hmm. don't want to, you know, kind of make it sound like you, your parents aren't great parents because they, they you, did their best. They did their best and you said they were, you know, there, there was, there was some issues obviously, mm-hmm. but like, what was your relationship with your dad in all of this? Almost non-existent. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would go to his house, but it was very much, I was very on guard and surface level. Mm-hmm. I was never like at my dad's house. It was just like, I'm at my dad's house right. or I'm like, I'm hanging out with him. And it, we just didn't really have much of a relationship in that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you had said, when I asked you about like those, that phrase that was said, you had said, um, because I was on unlovable or because Mm -hmm. I wasn't capable of loving. Do you know, like, was that kind of a result of some of these relationships and kind of like just the whole, I definitely believe that is a result of part, like that sort of stuff. And me being young, um, 
I just couldn't see and acknowledge like when the efforts were made because mm. I just saw and like heard that no one loves me because I'm unlovable. Right. And so any attempts that were made weren't acknowledged as attempts because I couldn't see it. Right. Because yeah. you had already kind of maybe accepted that yeah. belief. Yeah, it was already you know? there. It was already my right. truth. It was, yeah. Right. And, and I know that, you know, um, you had mentioned, you know, the other day that there was some, like even friend relationships mm-hmm. that kind of like contributed. Just share, share on some of those. Well, yeah, um, my friendships and relationships growing up seemed very conditional. Um, like if I didn't do what they wanted me to do, they would just break or it was like, it just was all very conditional. Right. Different friends at church, it was like I'd be thrown in the middle of different fights and I'd be Switzerland and all of these things and yeah. it's... It, yeah. it was very strange. It wasn't normal, I don't right, think. Right, right. So did you have, you know, kind of close friends growing up then? Yeah. Or? Um, I had a few very close friends. Um, yeah. Just different times. We moved a lot. We switched things around a lot. Mm-hmm. So it was just different friends, different places. Yeah. Yeah. But there was kind of those, the few was, kind of key relationships yeah. that almost reinforce that, you know, that statement, right? It was the big ones that were like, if you don't do what I want, I'm just not going to be friends with you anymore. And it's like, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. (laughs) Great friends. Yeah. Yeah. Good. But they were all I had, so. Yeah, right, right, right. So, you know, kind of, you know, and how old were you kind of at this time? Like, I know you said like you were 11 when your parents split up, but. This. Like, a f- it's all throughout different times. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not really a set time. I had friends in kindergarten that were like that. I had right. friends in, middle, like, middle school who were like that. I had friends in high school that were like that. Yeah. It yeah. was just all throughout trickled in mm-hmm. little hints and reminders. Right, Yeah. right, right. And so, you know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you say that you heard a few times, I think you even said like, not, you said it was three or four times that you heard that phrase. Mm -hmm. Uh, What was that phrase again? You, you are unlovable. Yeah. Right. Or it's like, you don't like, you can't love people because Mm -hmm. you don't see love around you. Right. So it's like, where's like, there's no love here. Right. Right. So obviously you can't be loved. No one loves you. You can't Mm. give love. Yeah. There's no love. Yeah. Yeah. And so you had heard that it was obviously kind of reinforced, you know, through Mm -hmm. some, you know, relationships in the family and then some, you know, actual (laughs) friendships kind of outside of that. So you're, you're at the point now where you're beginning to kind of get a better grasp on who who Sam is, right? Uh, You're, you're getting to the point in age where you can kind of make some of your own decisions. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess the, 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 the big question is like, what, what did you do with all of that? Like, what did you do with that, 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 that lie? We'll call it, cause that's what it was, right? It was a lie. lie. What did you do with that lie? What, like, how did that change Mm -hmm. Sam? How did that affect you? I had walls like no one else I'd ever met. Hmm. There were walls in front of walls, blocking walls. Yeah. So even if you made it past one level, you weren't getting anywhere. Right. So I didn't trust anyone. I didn't, like, I didn't date or, like, do any of that. I didn't hug my own family. Like, I didn't, like, I didn't touch anyone. Yeah. And it's, it was just very much, I'm unlovable. And so it's just better if I'm just. If I just keep people at bay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, did that have like uh, an uber negative effect? <laughs> I don't want to say on, because obviously it would on relationships. Yeah. But, you know, like looking back now, one of the one of the key things you said when we met, you said, I didn't hug somebody until 2018, mm-hmm. like until two years ago. Until two years right? ago, I couldn't t- hug people. So you you had mentioned, you know, that you kind of had these walls, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you just said, like, I had, I got these walls up. I'm not keeping people in, mm-hmm. right? Like, would you kind of like, I guess I'll ask it this way. <laughs> like, if you were able to kind of like go back and, and tell yourself something in that moment, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself that I'm lying and yeah. everything I've heard is a lie. Yeah. Because that's probably the only thing that would have changed anything. Because it was so 
deep right. and so engraved in my identity yeah. that there was like I there was no changing that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's that's good. That's good. Um, now you know again, kind of like through all this, you guys were still like actively kind of like Active. living in the church yeah. life, and obviously your parents have been split up now, but you guys were still plugged. Your mom and your mm-hmm. family were plugged into a church, and I think your your dad even was plugged into a different church. I think. No, you my said. dad uh, left the church completely. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. cut ties and yeah, then and left the church completely. Yeah. Yep. Um, now. That that's so it's so sorry. I just took camp there. Like it's so interesting, right? Like you know how you know obviously like divorce is not God's best, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, um, you know those listening might be offended that I would say that, right? But I mean, you know, I'm a big believer in marriage, mm-hmm. and and I know you are, you know, with your amazing husband Davin, right? But sometimes when those things happen, mm-hmm. right, there's an element of shame yep. that comes on. Do you know what I mean? And so I can understand. Maybe Maybe why your dad just kind of like, I'm, I'm out, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, whether it was like an internal decision to just say I'm done with that or whether it was like, I'm not loved or I'm mm-hmm. not accepted. Right. But so here you are. Um, that was our little tangent, yeah. right? Like <laughs> here you are, you're, you're in church. You're, you're kind of like living this out. Mm-hmm. You've been told these lies that you're unlovable. You're not capable yeah. of like giving or, or receiving mm-hmm. love. Right. Um, you are, you know, trying to fill, you know, your life up with all these different things. Was, was, was serving in church one of those Absolutely. things? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was at church probably five days a week. Mm. Um, just one thing or another. Yeah. It was just, there's church. So yeah. I'd fill up with all of these like after school things and then go to church and go do something church related and yeah. go help and serve and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, it, it, the reason I asked that is because I remember you saying there was there was two key people that began to kind of speak hope into you. Um, and not necessarily just by words, but just by their actions, right? Um, you know, Gail and Shar yeah. are their names. And um, if, if Gail and Shar are listening, I hope they find encouragement, right? But tell us, tell us about those relationships that... Because they were both yeah. people that were in the church that... Mm-hmm. We're able to see mm-hmm. Sam and, you know, maybe her hurt stage of believing the lie that she's unlovable yeah. and independent little <laughs> Sam can't be hugged. Right. Like, mm-hmm. you know, tell us about, tell us about Gail. And Char. Yeah. Um, Char came first. Char was like Sunday school through to like beginning of high school. Um, and it was just sort of like, there's this human who's like not related to me who actually is like spending time with me and wants to talk to me and wants to take me camping and actually is genuinely curious and excited to know how I'm doing. Um, So there was Char and she Mm -hmm. was there for ages and I love Char to death. Um, And then there was Gail who came in after Char got married and had to leave. Um, And yeah, she was just someone who didn't talk down to me, didn't talk right. like around me. She saw me and saw what she needed to say. Mm. And she was like, if drama was happening or something, she'd just be like, well, what are we going to do? Right. And right. yeah, they were just two great women yeah. and role models. Yeah. yeah. And so there's, there's two women. Mm-hmm. And I know that you had said, you know, like there was instances, you know, that you can specifically remember you know, not just with Gail and Shar, but with family members and, and your mom specifically, <laughs> right? Like you yeah. shared that memory uh, of, you know, going off for an audition. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what was that with your mom? Yeah, well, um, I've always been super, super invested in music and always knew that I wanted something to do with that to be my life. Mm-hmm. And so there was auditions for this TV show um, and they had it in Vancouver and it was a singing competition for kids. And my mom took me four years in a row and she would sleep on concrete outside. She slept on hotel floors. Like wow. we would be in line for hours. We'd wake up at two in the morning to go drive down. Like yeah. Yeah. just crazy, f- cool, weird things. And, and what's awesome is like you're able to look back on that mm-hmm. now, right? And be like, wow, I was, I was actually loved. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I brought up like Gail and Shar yeah. and obviously your mom, right? Mm-hmm. Like so like in, the, in that place, like... You know, right now you can look back and yeah. you can see, but do you remember kind of like finding any sense of hope 
you know, amidst your, like, we'll call it unlovable state or whatever, mm. you know, like whatever the lie was, but. Yeah, back then it was very much hope is hoping to be someone, hoping to be seen, hoping to be a role model, but like not, not being able to be because I didn't have that actual hope and I didn't right. have that actual love. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah like, um, you know, and, and, you know, I guess like now with, with say with your dad, right. Mm -hmm. You kind of had said like the relationship was kind of almost non-existent. Yeah. Right. But I remember when we met, I asked you a question, right. And I, and I just simply asked this, I said, tell me about a time that you, you made your dad smile. Yeah. Uh, I've what been thinking that? about it more. So mm -hmm. I have more examples too. Awesome. Um, but yeah, just like at like a cheer competition, or at something, and it's like he sees that I'm doing something that I loved, mm -hmm. and he saw that I had no fear in doing what I loved. Right. And so that's those are the moments where he would smile, and I'd actually notice it. Or it's yeah. like he'd say something, and I'd be like, "Oh yay!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your dad, you had said, was like super creative, oh, like like loved it, loved, loved that it. end of things. I got so much of my creativity from my dad. Yeah, a lot of the competitive yeah. nature too, but mostly the creativity. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> And so, you know, I, uh, like, I just remember you saying, um, like my, my dad, like not only did he smile, but he had his camera yeah, out. Yeah, he had his camera out. Like, you know, and how, like how, how many pictures are we talking of oh, you? Oh, uh, those lots. Cheer calls? I, I see them every year on Facebook. There's lots. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's like posting a new memory, a new memory. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I know that, you know, it, like you're still in the process of mm -hmm. kind of like healing through, you know, some family relationships and, yep. and friend relationships, you know, and, and that's why I think it's important to, you know, and that's why I asked mm -hmm. that, you know, like tell, tell us about a time that, you know, your, yeah. your dad smiled or, you know, maybe, is there another time that you can think of where you just remember feeling the love and appreciation mm -hmm. of your father, you know? Um, another time was when, oh yeah, um, when he saw me in my wedding dress, hmm. um, I was very much like, uh, I don't know if I want much family stuff in my wedding because I wasn't sure. And then he saw me in my wedding dress and he just smiled and started crying. And I'm wow. like, okay, my dad sees me. That's right. Oh, weird. And, and totally, you're right. Yeah. It would have been like almost shell shock, right? Yeah. Because again, you know, you kind of live this life yeah. where it you didn't always feel that, right? Oh. Like weekends with your dad were just like, as you said, you just kind of were at the, at the same place, mm -hmm. you know, not really kind of like time together. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, and, and I, I find it, you know, awesome that you're answering that question like that. Now, if I can be a little blunt, right. Like when we had asked you that question, uh, you know, earlier in the week here, how, how did you respond? I sat there mm -hmm. and had to think for a minute. Yeah. And I actually like, I realized that I'd never actually thought of a time Right. Where it was like a positive thing. Yeah. It was all just negative, 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 negative. Yeah. And so it actually like threw me off. Right. I was almost like taken <laughs> off balance. And I'm like, what, 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 huh? And I actually had to stop and think. Right. It was weird. Yeah. No, and, and I do, because yeah, you're right. Like it was, it was almost like, you know, like, hey, you know, Sam, how, tell me about a time your dad made you, you know, you made your dad smile, right? And the response was like, well, fi he finally came to yeah, a cheer there comp, was that. right? Like, you know, and, and it's interesting, you know, even like kind of mm -hmm. hearing your response now, right, is because it's not as, as laced with, I guess, like negativity Negative. or, yeah. you know, it's like you're able to view it through the lens of, honestly, through the lens of hope, yeah. right? And not just like through past experience, mm -hmm. right? Or that's the way that it used to yeah. be. Or, you know, he, he was only there because he didn't have something else to do that mm -hmm. weekend, right? But, you know, being able to kind of focus. And again, this is so important in this mm -hmm. day and age right now, right? With this pandemic, it's so easy to look and find the yeah. negative, right? But like people that have hope need to look, you know, with hope, yeah, right? And so I love that you're able to kind of, you know, think about and, and answer that now. And you've already kind of answered my next question, right? Like, what did you get from your mom and dad? Like, you know, like you, you, yeah. you mentioned creativity, like, 
Both of my parents are yeah. very creative, so my creativity is definitely thanks to them. Mm -hmm. um, my competitive is definitely my dad and sports and all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get all sorts of things from them. My mom, I get, I think my kind heart comes from my mom mm -hmm. and the way I see things and like some of the ways I communicate. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's weird. I haven't really thought about it until this week. So it's right. very fresh and very yeah, yeah. new. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, it was a great time to just spend kind of dialoguing, mm -hmm. you know, Shyla and myself with you and you and Davin, um, you know, so maybe let's just kind of fast forward a bit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and obviously, you know, like not, you know, kind of just moving past your, your past, but mm -hmm. like the, the present right now, you're, right now. you're married to, yep. you know, Davin and you've been married for how long have you guys been married? A year and a bit. A year and a, a bit. A year and a bit. Right? So it was early 2019. I think you yeah, said January. Yeah, first week of 2019. First week of 2019. So tell us tell us a little bit about that relationship. Yeah. Davin was always one of those people I knew from church. Um, yeah. He lived here. I lived in Vancouver. Yeah. But we always knew each other. He lived at our house one summer because he worked at our church. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, he came back one summer and all of a sudden we became best friends. And we couldn't yeah. like we couldn't not like hang out together. Right, right. And yeah, and so, so that was. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because he came back one summer and we were best friends because it was what two summers before yeah. that he was there and and thirteen or fourteen year old Sam was like, "This is great. This is awesome." <laughs> I hated it at first. I thought yeah. it was like, "Oh, another boy in our house." Right. And then by the end, I'm like, "Oh, he cute. He's leaving." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so he came back and he interned again, and you guys had started uh, the dating relationship, yep. right? What was what was that like for you? Because again, mm -hmm. you were still living in this, yeah. you know, um, this this place of like I I'm not lovable and yeah. I can't give love, and you know, even even like we just said, right? Like you know, um, the the hugging you didn't hug people. Didn't you you had people. said that you didn't hug people till 2018. Yes. Right? So, but like, tell us about, what was that like for you and Davin? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was very insecure at the beginning, but it was also like, it was this human who understood and saw things and was also broken, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was not as difficult as one would have thought it would have been. Yeah. Because um, it was just someone's there and they're comfortable and they are comforting me and they love me and... So it was just very much dive right into that relationship. Right, yeah. right, right. And you and you dove, and right? You dove. Like, yeah. So when was that 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 uh, Davin was interning that you guys kind of started the dating relationship? Um, it was the summer I turned seventeen, so three years ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your Twitter painted still. I, I love it. it. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the first two years of marriage. Everything is just all fine and dandy, right? Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just simply asked um, you you when when that was. Like so it was seven you were yeah, seventeen I was years 17. old. And then there was about a year, I guess, of, of dating. Yeah. Um, so what was that like when you got married? And again, kind of going back now, going mm -hmm. back years and years before, well, not years, you're only 20, but like <laughs> years before you had said like you had built up walls, mm -hmm. right? And, and I, and I know that you had mentioned like Davin was somehow was able to kind of break down those walls, yeah. right? But like how, I guess, hard was that for you to, to let him, let him in to who mm -hmm. Sam really is? Because Sam isn't, we know that, Sam is not unlovable. Sam is Sam's not the, <laughs> Sam, Sam is a hoot, that's right. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, sorry, I got distracted by the word hoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not Davin, right? No, but it's it's cool because we, we asked this question, right? When mm -hmm. we, actually it was funny, Davin was the one that asked this question, right? When we had originally met, mm -hmm. right? But like, how how did you, how did you let him in? At first, it probably was more difficult than I really acknowledge it was. Yeah. Um, but like, I had a conversation with him. I just told him like that my reality was my reality and that like, I was messed up. I was broken. I had hurt like mm -hmm. deep in me. Mm -hmm. And 
if you want to be here, you got you can be here. You just got to promise me you can't just disappear. Yeah. And yeah. So I right. had to have that conversation. With yeah, him. yeah. Yeah. And it went well, obviously. Yeah. He still proposed, right? Still there. So <laughs> So I guess here, here's maybe kind of a, a, a very broad question, mm-hmm. right? But like, what was your perception of God kind of growing up and, and living through that? And then even meeting Davin and, you know, like, I, like, I just remember asking, like, you know, how, I guess, what, what did that feel like mm-hmm. when you, you know, kind of felt like Davin's embrace, you know, like kind of like maybe let's call it your first real hug mm-hmm. in, in years, you know, but kind of like, like interlacing that together with again, kind of like just who God was, who was God to Sam, I guess, through this whole journey mm-hmm. that you were living. God was someone I was told I was supposed to have a relationship with someone that I knew, like I felt the presence of God so many times, but I could not understand the relationship part of it. So I'm like, I know God exists. I know this. And I got to stand with what I believe and what I know. But there was not really much relationship. Um, Mm. I didn't really spend time in my Bible. I didn't really do much other than church. And so that, that was my relationship with God all throughout that. And that only just changed recently. Right, right, right. So... Sam, I guess, let me, let me ask you this and you can answer as <laughs> elaborate, as simple as you want. Right. But, um, growing up, you know, having not the best relationship with, you know, your parents or specifically your dad. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I know that it's, it's great. It's still, it's still being, you know, worked on and, yeah. and, and mended and, you know, and all that. But, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, hearing from friends with conditions to, you know, receiving their love and, and even hearing, like you said, like specifically a few times, like Sam, you are not capable. You're, you're like, I think the quote was that you said was like, Sam, you're so independent that you're not capable of receiving love. Right. And hearing all those things. Right. And then, you know, kind of processing through and to the point of it affecting you and even like relationships with family members and, you know, and all that. But, um, right now, are you lovable? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And, and are you capable of like loving and and giving love? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because I was, like, my eyes were open to love. Yeah. Like, I moved here, and it was, like, love, love, love. We love you. We love you. We love you. And I'm, like, each time they said it, I was, like, oh, this is weird. This is weird. (laughs) And eventually I just got, like, oh, yeah, we love you. We love you. Yeah. God loves you. God loves you. And I actually, like, had to hear it so much Mm -hmm. that it, reformed the pathways in my brain right. where it was just sort of like, yeah, I am great. I love people. I am lovable. Yeah. Like it's great. Yeah. And you're married, I'm right? Married. I mean, you, it's <laughs> tough to have marriage without love. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, and I love that you, you say that it kind of like changed the way that your, your brain would think. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, it's kind of, it reminds me of, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. And you kind of, you kind of live that, you know? And so I guess, let me, let me kind of, you know, ask this is like, how would you encourage somebody that like, whether it's that lie, Mm -hmm. right? Like that you're unlovable, which to be honest with you, I think is, is very real for a lot of people, um, based on like situation, based on like circumstance or, you know, even just based on the fact that people are lonely right now because of this, right? Like, what would you, what would you say to them right now? Right now, I would tell them that those are lies. Mm -hmm. If something's from God, it's not going to tear you down and it's not going to make you feel worthless and make you feel distant from people like ignore those lies fight those lies find those lies dig into scripture Mm. and write the truth comparative to the lies like yeah don't believe them right right (laughs) because it yeah so what does you know we started this by you reciting romans Mm -hmm. 8 Right. And, and Romans eight, as you had said, it was kind of like this theme verse, even kind of growing up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of neat because you had, you had kind of the, the answer, you had kind of the out in a sense, 
But, you know, in that time, you were still living kind of like, again, with the close hand mm-hmm. around like, I've got this. It's my own independence. I'm going to keep mm-hmm. people at bay. Uh, and, and, and with good reason. It, you yeah. know what I mean? With good reason because of the circumstances that you live through, mm-hmm. because of the different things, right? But now, like, what does Romans 8, like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, what does it mean to you now? Romans 8 means like 38, like 30, 38, 38 yeah, 39. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing can separate me from God and nothing can separate me from that love. No one can tell me mm-hmm. anything that will make me go back and think, does Jesus actually love me? Hmm. Because I know, I know that Jesus loves me and yeah. nothing, nothing is going to get in the way of nothing. that. Nothing. Nothing. I love that. I love that, that sureness of yeah. like nothing, you know, cause that's honestly, that's believing scripture. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And not like reading something, you know, that was written for us right now. Right. And, and for all of eternity, not reading that through the veil of like what your experiences were or what even your present mm-hmm. circumstance is. Right. And that's honestly, that's the truth yeah. of Romans eight thirty eight. 39. Would you recite it one more time for us? For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. And that's the thing uh, I, we want to leave you with is that Romans 8 speaks to you right now. Uh, just as Sam said, right, it, there's, there's nothing. Nothing comes in between his love for me. Nothing comes in between his love for you. And so would you just be encouraged this morning or this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching this, you know, through the story that we just heard from Sam, that nothing can separate you from the love that is found in Christ Jesus. And you know what, specifically, and we kind of learned this even, you know, a little bit through Sam's story, but sometimes we kind to put that verse through the context of present external circumstances. And we continually think that it's the different things that would actually dictate whether or not we are loved. But as Sam learned, sometimes it's the internal decision. Sometimes it's the internal kind of choice that we make of believing the lies of the circumstance, believing the lies of words that are said, believing the lies of certain actions of whether it be family members or friends or pastors or leaders or employers or bosses, whatever it is. Sometimes it's honestly just deciding in our own hearts to maybe believe the misinformation that's out there, uh, whether it be a direct lie or whether it be just believing that, you know what, I've never been able to receive love, so I never will. But I want to challenge you right now, wherever it is that you're sitting, if it's at home with, uh, you know, a pet on your lap, or maybe you're doing home church with another family, I want to challenge you right now to just simply just kind of just think on this right now is I can receive love. We think of the most famous verse in scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Sometimes we think, well, God so loved the believers. God so loved the Christians. No, no, no. God so loved the world in its entirety, broken people, broken system. And God sent his son for me and for you. And so I want to challenge you guys right here, right now. Would you Make the decision to say, Jesus, I receive your love. Uh, Regardless of my experiences, regardless of the things that I've walked through, regardless of the lies that have been told to me, regardless of my own internal decision to say, it's my independence, it's my own way, it's, it's, I've got this just as we learned from Sam. I want to challenge you right now to just simply open your hand and say, Jesus, I receive your love love. For those of you that made that decision to say, I receive that love, I just want to just say this simple prayer and you can follow along with me. Uh, and, and we'd love to hear, you know, from you if you make this prayer for the very first time. But just let me just let me just pray this prayer. And would you pray it with me? If you want to make a decision to receive the love of Jesus Christ this morning or this afternoon, and it's just simply this is Jesus, I want what you want for me today. I choose life and life abundant. I choose hope in you. And I thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. I choose life with you right now. I receive your love. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your peace. I receive your hope. God, I give you my life. Would you be my Lord and my Savior? Amen. If you made that decision right now, 
direct message, private message us right here on Facebook. We'd love to help you take your next steps with Jesus right here, right now. The last thing I want to say is just simply this. Sam had talked about it, how Romans 8, 38, 39 had kind of been like this foundational scripture in her life, right? And that's honestly what we want to do. We want to point you. We want to uh, point you people, point people to Jesus, and we want to point people to the living hope that comes in the scriptures that are alive and well for us right now. So one of the ways that we're going to do that is I want to challenge you right here, right now to download you version on your smartphone and look up me, Dave Manny, add me as a friend if you haven't already. And we as a church are going to be starting a Bible reading plan because guys, that's what it's about. It's about diving into the word and finding the hope that is written for you and for me. We're going to be starting a daily reading plan called Crazy Love by a pastor by the name of Francis Chan. And it's through the next seven days, we're going to dive into scripture and find this love together. And so starting on June 1st, on Monday, don't worry if you're watching this after, you can quickly catch up with us. But would you download that app, find Dave Manny, we will add you to that version Bible reading plan, and we will dive into scripture together. Hey, that was an amazing message, a great message. And in fact, uh, you know, kind of two of the big takeaways I took from there was don't believe the lies and you're loved. And one of the best ways I found out that uh, I know I'm loved is by getting into the Word. And I know Dave mentioned it, uh, that uh, he's starting a brand new Bible study series through the YouVersion Bible app. So get on into that app. Find Dave Manny if you haven't already friended him on there. And uh, it'll have his little beautiful face on there because there's a few Dave Mannies, but uh, make sure you pick the right one. But uh, he will uh, then invite you to the Bible study. Um, don't forget to come back next week. We've got yet another installment of Hope is Dope as we uh, uh, talk about how hope can be found in Jesus. And of course, over here, somewhere to my left, your right is the giving button. If you are a friend of Bridge Church, then we ask that you um, just hit that give button uh, so that way we can continue to share this message with everyone else. So remember, you are loved and have a great week.